This fighter jet doesn't look like it's real. It can take off vertically and hover in the air, just like helicopters. But this is not new technology. Vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL aircraft, have been in action for decades. These aircraft are designed with engines that can change their direction of thrust mid-air by adjusting their nozzles. This is helpful in situations where there's not enough space for a runway, but the capabilities of a fighter jet are still required. But designing, constructing, and even flying aircraft like the famous Harrier has been notoriously difficult and dangerous. Today on Boost, we'll take a closer look at why exactly these hovering jets were needed in the first place, what kind of challenges the engineers faced, and how they are still used today and in the future. Spoiler alert, there are even more advanced VTOL aircraft in development, so keep watching as we learn all about these engineering marvels. The first vertical takeoff and landing jet, known as the Harrier, was built by the British Royal Air Force. This aircraft, which was remarkable especially for its time nearly 60 years ago, could fly just below the speed of sound during level flight. Collaboration between the British and the US military led to significant advancements, making the Harrier a game-changer on the battlefield. The Harrier stood out for its ability to perform fast airstrikes. Its unique feature was that it did not require a traditional runway, allowing it to launch and land in diverse locations. However, the early models of the Harrier, while revolutionary, didn't quite measure up to the modern technology used today. In the beginning of the program, the AV-8A Harrier emerged from the mines at British aerospace company Hawker Siddeley in the late 1960s, aiming to be the future's attack aircraft. This aircraft was an adaptation of the original Harrier design, tailored specifically to suit the Marines' need for an aircraft capable of launching from nearer battle zones. Its capability for vertical or short takeoffs and landings was groundbreaking, enabling it to operate from compact runways or even rugged terrain. The heart of the AV-8A was its Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine, a newly developed engine that made the thrust direction vectoring possible. Armed to the teeth with weapons such as machine guns, missiles, and other bombs, this jet could reach speeds of up to 650 miles per hour. Deployed in various conflicts, from the Vietnam War to the battles in the Gulf War and Afghanistan, the Hawker Siddeley's aircraft proved its worth. But still, it had its constraints, particularly in range and payload capacity. The need for the next-generation VTOL aircraft led to the birth of the AV-8B Harrier II in the 1980s, boasting many significant improvements. The introduction of new engine vectoring technology and the shift to fly-by-wire systems marked a new era. Fly-by-wire systems transformed additional manual controls into an electronic format, where the pilot's movements are processed by computers to ensure precise movements of the aircraft's parts. This was even more important for the Harrier than most other aircraft, as it was more difficult to fly. The upgraded AV-8B Harrier II featured exceptional landing accuracy, making it an essential tool in military tactics and reinforcing the Harrier series as terrifying attack machines. The first flight ever in a Harrier is like, you don't really remember it because it's so fast. I mean, you take off and like your brain is back behind you on the runway. It was really exciting. Like Captain John Standard, Every Harrier pilot undergoes rigorous training. This training includes the usual classroom theory, but also advanced simulator sessions, which are particularly important as the aircraft works in a very different way than any other that the pilots might have flown before. Once the newly trained pilots have learned all they can from the theory lessons and the simulator, it's time for extensive flight practice. But before taking to the skies, each Harrier pilot carefully checks the aircraft ensuring everything is functioning correctly and ready for action. They examine the arsenal on board. Missiles and rockets are strategically placed in weapon racks beneath the wings and body of the aircraft, secured and aligned perfectly for deployment. Once the weapons are loaded and integrated into the jet's systems, they're connected electronically to the Harrier's internal computers. This setup informs the pilot about the status of each weapon. 
During operations, the pilot selects and deploys these weapons as the mission demands. Engaging a target involves a sequence where the pilot picks the weapon from an array on the dashboard, guided by the jet's advanced aiming technologies like radar and infrared sensors. By pressing trigger buttons on the joystick or throttle, the pilot launches the selected weapon. Integration of the Harrier's weapons with its digital flight system enables the pilot to make precise adjustments to flight parameters while engaging targets, thus keeping complete awareness and optimizing the strike's impact. Launching from an aircraft carrier in a Harrier is a quick yet intense moment, powered by the jet's ability to direct its thrust. This technology allows for rapid acceleration followed by an immediate ascent above the sea. For landing, the pilot employs this same vectored thrust to decelerate and stabilize mid-air before making a controlled vertical descent back to the deck. This unique challenge of piloting a Harrier demands precision and calmness. If you've enjoyed the video so far, make sure to subscribe to Boost not to miss any of our new videos and click the thumbs up button while you're at it. Marine Corps Harrier jet crashed into a residential neighborhood in Imperial, California yesterday afternoon. The impact set several homes on fire, but fortunately the pilot ejected safely and was taken to a local hospital. Despite the advanced technology equipped in Harriers, pilots say they are challenging to handle. Marine Corps aviators report that these jets experience more mishaps than other aircraft models, particularly during landing phases. A notable incident occurred on June 7, 2014, when Captain William Mahoney of the U.S. Marine Corps faced a malfunction with his Harrier's front landing gear. As I was climbing away from the deck, I put my gear up, realized I had a gear malfunction, so I immediately pulled the power back, slowed the aircraft down so I wouldn't overspeed the landing gear, and then uh, went just above the ship at about 2,000 feet and started talking to Paddles, who is a, another jet pilot in the tower that uh, controls us when we land. They're also up there if we have a problem. Throughout this tense moment, he remained in constant communication with the aircraft carrier below. To address the critical issue, the ship's engineers quickly came up with an innovative solution. The aircraft carrier happened to have stool-like equipment on board. It was the perfect height to accommodate the jet's compromised landing. Captain Mahoney, demonstrating remarkable skill, gently guided his aircraft onto this makeshift landing pad. The alternative, ejecting into the sea, would have resulted in the complete loss of the Harrier, an aircraft valued between 15 to 30 million dollars. The upkeep of these valuable jets is crucial due to their complex designs and systems. Regular maintenance is vital to prevent technical failures, operational disruptions, and potential accidents. When handled with care, the operational life of Harrier jets can be significantly prolonged, safeguarding the substantial investments made by governments and military forces in these high-tech aircraft. The United States military consistently eyes the future, planning beyond its current fleet's capabilities. This foresight is leading to the gradual retirement of the Harrier jets, making way for the more modern F-35B Lightning II. The shift comes as the F-35B, another VTOL model, outperforms the old Harriers in speed, range, and versatility. Capable of engaging in broader mission types, from combat in the skies and on the ground to conducting electromagnetic warfare and reconnaissance, the F-35B stands out as a superior choice. First started in 2017, the transition from the AV-8B to the F-35B aims for completion by 2025, as per plans by the U.S. Marine Corps. The exact future may be uncertain, yet one thing remains clear. VTOL technology will maintain its pivotal role in military strategy. The introduction of the Harrier revolutionized aerial warfare, eliminating the necessity for lengthy runways and enabling takeoffs from small spaces such as naval vessels. This allowed for unprecedented flexibility in deployment locations and tactics. Despite its historical significance, the Harrier AV-8B is confronted with the inevitable passage of time having served since the 1980s. Now, the stage is set for the F-35B Lightning II, with its advanced features and enhanced combat readiness reflecting the dynamic nature of present-day military needs. 
the Harrier's legacy remains as one of the most revolutionary aircraft that changed the way in which military aviation operates. What do you think of the Harrier and VTOL aircraft in general? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to Boost so you don't miss any of our new videos. Keep watching by clicking on your screen now.